we understand the fact that gold is popular mm-hmm. we understand the fact 90% of this country or 90% of the jewelry sales is gold we understand the fact that 90% of the industry is still unorganized mm-hmm. so here is an opportunity where we can take a simple product mm-hmm. and still create financial inclusion for the people mm-hmm. and get more and more people into the financial main financial markets wow. we can't serve the country in a better way So welcome to the 18th episode of the Indian Market Story. We're here with Mr. Jaydi Banerjee, a really interesting guest, the co-founder of Dwara Smart Code, who's making gold savings plans accessible to millions of Indians. Uh Mr. Banerjee, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Uh Dwara Smart Code is an incredibly innovative and interesting product, and I'd really love to know what's the inspiration behind this idea? Where did you come up with the idea of making gold savings accessible to millions of Indians, especially in digital gold? Well thank you so much Varun first of all thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh it's very interesting that I also love the fact that the youngster is actually interviewing me because gold is something that youngsters don't normally look at most of the millennials stay away from gold. So let me give you a certain understanding of what the market is like. It's a couple of facts and then we can connect the show sure. together. One is gold is universally acceptable mm-hmm. number one. The second fact is that we are in a country like India where almost 450 million people reside in villages perhaps more but this is i'm talking about 450 million people who are purchasing power who <laughs> reside in villages most of these people in the villages have no access to social security because the country doesn't offer it <laughs> they have no education they have no uh, trust there's a trust deficit for them to go and invest in any other product except gold mm-hmm <laughs> So when we wanted to take these two facts together the gold is universally acceptable and it's popular product and the rest of, and the, there's a huge demand side because the country wants to consume gold mm-hmm. and they don't have an opportunity to do it I'll come to the, what they do traditionally I'll explain that to you but when this when we see there's no opportunity to do it this was a great opportunity for business mm-hmm. so all we had to do is understand how to crank the distribution right because sitting yeah, we are we are based out of mumbai mm-hmm. sitting in mumbai planning you know going across the country to 4 450 million people almost 60000 villages is a massive task yeah so we said that only way we can do this is through the method of technology right so we what we do currently is we have partners who are large banks so mbfcs fintechs microfinance institution business correspondents who have the last mile and who mm-hmm. service the customer so we tie up with them and they sell our product as a cross sell product on their platforms okay they sell loans they sell insurance solar products agri products they also sell gold right that is how we thought about this product that there is a problem here is a demand all we need it is a bridge that can get these two absolutely and we then bring down a much la big solve a much larger problem which is we bring down the import bill gold import bill of the government of india right government has been trying for a very very long time for gold to get monetized mm-hmm. and people because of this trust deficit people have never come into that right so this is an opportunity to one work at a very large visual level of bringing down the import bill mm-hmm. secondly actually give people access to a product which they can easily uh, it's very very fungible in yeah. constantly exchangeable they understand the product yeah and it is gold so yeah and it's universally applicable i think it has that emotional connect for the indian consumer as well because i think holding and owning gold has you know long roots in our culture it's the it's the pride and joy of every household i think indian households have 11% of all gold in the world so clearly there's a demand i think like you said and uh, it seems like you guys have gone some distance in cracking that distribution um if i understand and if i remember correctly you've managed to make gold savings accessible to 135000 or 1.35 lakh people that's right and you have over 2000 distribution agents yourselves as well as you know uh, multiple institutions so can you talk me through what that journey was like i mean when did dwara smart gold start out and uh, who did you guys start out with uh we actually started somewhere in 2019 we incorporated the company in october 2019 we started with one partner in uh, chennai based partner mm-hmm. which has got distribution in largely in tamil nadu it has got some uttarakhand mm-hmm. and some in bihar and other places but is largely tamil nadu 
Tamil Nadu is also a country which understands gold. It's also a state which understands gold very well. Yeah. So we st- we, st- we started with them. What got us back on the little bit of a back foot is the pandemic. Because we use the feet on street model to distribute our product. When feet on street were not available on the ground, mm-hmm. what happened? The product took a little bit of a back seat. Mm-hmm. However, more than the pandemic, uh, I mean, it's almost a year's time. We are, we are back and we are currently in 4,000 villages. We have got 14 such partners instead of one partner we started with. And uh, we have reached one like 35,000 uh, customer base. The advantage the customer has is the customer doesn't need to trust us. Mm-hmm. Customer needs to trust the partner. The partner needs to trust us. And the whole system works very beautifully. For the partner, why it's become exciting is because there are various products to sell, but no, no other product gives you the conversion like gold does. Mm-hmm. When you try to sell insurance, of 10 customers, two will buy. Yeah. You try to sell a seller, solar product, you can sell one in four months. However, gold, every transaction is almost uh, paid for, which means it's on the 90% conversion on a sales call. Right. So partners are very really excited because when he goes with a gold product, so much so, some of our partners in fact came back and said, Bhai, aapka gold nahi bechenge. <laughs> because what happens is because when when we when my person takes gold, the other guy doesn't want a solar product, an agri product. He's saying, "Give me the gold. I want to buy the gold product." <laughs> so we have a very unique uh, proposition here because the demand side is very 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 yeah. high, and we have a good supply side. Yeah, we have another very unique challenge where the customer knows more than the salesman. <laughs> this is one product. If you go to sell it, the customer says, "I know the price. I know what the making charges are. I know what this guy is doing. I know what the." how gold works. So mm-hmm. why are you trying to sell it? If we are able to crack that even better through education and processes and further and more, the, you know, broad based this knowledge base, I think uh, very, very soon, I hope to cross the 1 million mark and probably 5 million mark in this country. Yeah, I mean, I think at the rate at which you guys are growing, 2019, we're in 2023, four years, you've hit 100,000 in spite of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, by next year, hopefully you'll be at a million. Uh, that's what we're hoping. Uh, we could have reached that milestone much faster, except that uh, you made a very interesting point that people in the villages are, and people like gold and they're emotionally connected to it, mm-hmm. right? So our product is actually a women empowerment product because when you go to deep rural, even semi-urban even, mm-hmm. the women of the house, the only asset under her control of the homemaker is gold. Yeah. The business or the factory belongs to the father or the father-in-law. Any people working and they're working overseas, the son or the son-in-law, the yeah. women of the house have gold with her. So yeah. the moment you give her gold and give her an option to invest in gold, she becomes empowered in the household to stand on her own, mm-hmm. which also helps the social standing, which also helps the emotional standing. Yeah. So when you put all this thing together, no, this is a product which is actually ready to revolutionize the way investment work. I know, I know financial pundits always say, then gold is not something safe haven. But having said that, it has beaten many fiat currencies. Mm-hmm. Gold has always, over the period of 10, 20 years, shown 14 to 15% return, which is extremely healthy. Mm-hmm. Which is extremely healthy in any investment. And if you're giving that in a very simplified form to the rural villages, what better than? Absolutely. And I think, uh, so I was looking through some of your materials and what struck me is how many of your testimonials, how many of the people that have bought gold bought it for purposes like education. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe let's, tra- I want to know more about what those savings mean to the people that are actually making those savings. Because building up a bank of savings to enable something like education, uh, that has transformative effects for the country, right? And uh, what I want to understand, so what's the typical profile of somebody that's buying and, and how much do they buy? How regularly do they buy What's, how do we, you know, how do we build that bank of savings up for these people? How does that work? Um, so there are a lot of questions in that. And I hope I will perhaps you'll we'll repeat some of those questions. Sure. I'll see what I can remember. But let me first tell you a story. This is a village which is very far flung. We went from Do to Dhule to people who are not familiar. From Mumbai to Dhule is almost a 16 hour drive. We drove, oh. to, we drove to Dhule with one of the partners who's a large microfinance institution. When we reached Dhule, we thought we'd meet customers. But they said, no, the customer is still two hours away from there. Because customer is on a Maharashtra-Gujarat border. And, and that's a very rural, deep village. So we got in the car again. Somewhere the car broke down, we had to get into a matador because it was a dirt path. Mm-hmm. We went through that and we reached a village where what 30 women came. Then we had to have, uh, have one of the ladies who was handling corporate uh, affairs for us, who's a lady there. 
she was the only one allowed into the room. The rest of the men and I had to make the presentation. We couldn't get in the room. And the women sitting with... We don't want that. Wait, wait. Yeah. So we were wondering what to, what to do. So we started the presentation from the window. Wow. Explaining what the product is. Now see the transformation. In some time, she opened the door. So I'm saying, they are saying, please come inside and explain. <laughs> After some time, and, and believe me, I don't speak the language. They're speaking a combination of Rajasthani, Gujarati and Maharashtrian. I am speaking either Hindi or English. When I explained, I asked, how many of you know price of gold? No answer. Sona. All hands went up. I said, how much of Sona do you buy? So I'm doing this. I'm actually, eating. what do you do? Then they opened up and showed that they were in one gram, two gram, three gram. So I asked any of them. Any of you understand a little bit of what I'm trying to say. So the retail manager stepped in and said, if you allow me to come in the room, I'll understand what they are saying and I'll explain. So I said, can you ask them, I'll I tell you a story. To I said, I told the regional manager, I'm going to tell you a story. Let me guess what you do or to all the ladies. And if I'm right, you put your hands up. Three or four of you ladies get together. I have seen the road in which we came. You get into a matted or a bullock cart. You go to the... ST bus stop mm -hmm. or you go to the highway you flag down an ST bus and you do, you do this every month and five of you go to nearby Dhule and there you deposit 1000 or 2000 rupees and do the same journey back I said is this right so all of them said yes this is right I said if I got the product to your doorstep through this partner would you buy it you believe me every hand went up and said do we have to pay right now or will you come back to collect the money it's that powerful a product is I wish I could distribute it and go everywhere all at once. This is that powerful a product because what they are seeing is hope, future. Financial markets are somewhere else. Stock exchange is somewhere else. Equity shares, debentures, they don't know any of this. But they human beings. They know how to, what they need to do with their families. They knew what to do with the retirement. Yeah. Here is a product which they understand. It is simple. Yeah. And our product doesn't stop there. Savings is only the starting point. They can take a loan against that savings. Mm -hmm. RBI allows them to take almost 75% as the LTV, the yeah. loan transaction value. Th that, that means they can take a loan against the savings, which also means that suppose you save for a while, you take a loan against it. Of course, there are some steps to be taken, mm -hmm. it's physical jewelry, mm -hmm. all of that. We take care of all of that compliance. Once you take a loan against it, which means your savings is still intact. You take a loan, you fulfill the loan and continue your savings yeah. again. And which means money in emergency, which means your saving is intact. When they complete their uh, complete their term, we also offer them that you can take a jewelry in exchange, which is what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And throughout the journey till you are saving, there is no making charges and there's nothing else that you pay for. Okay. So, you know, an interesting fact, because we just did a podcast on NBFCs, the gold loan interest rates are a good 5-6 percentage less than the interest rates on, say, microfinance or unsecured loans or money lender loans. So enabling them to take credit against those gold savings is also reducing the cost of credit for them, which is, you know, an incredible uh, outcome for all people. Absolutely. And we're doing some one step better. We also offer them insurance on their product. Wow. Which means that if you take the savings product, we bundle an insurance product, you have two years of health insurance. Wow. Okay. Including hospitalization. So let me let me try and understand this thing because I'm I'm not sure I'm able to fully conceptualize it. So how does the savings plan in the product work exactly? So do you make a monthly deposit and they own some digital gold or physical like how how does this work? I so let me start from the beginning. Uh but we have a partner mm -hmm. who's a microfinance company mm -hmm. or an NBFC. They have a set of customers and they have feet on street. We do the technology integration with their platform. Mm -hmm. So on their mobile handsets, our product is available. Mm -hmm. We push the gold prices every day. Mm -hmm. They take, carry the product and go to the customer. Many of these customers pay cash because they have no access to UPI or bank accounts. Mm -hmm. They don't keep money in the bank account or they don't do UPI or they don't start eNash because if they miss the payment, the bank charges them. Mm. There's a bank a fake, fake uh, charge from the bank. So they don't, they prefer cash. That guy collects the cash. All this cash is accumulated by the partner and debited to us, end mm -hmm. of the day. The price that she has paid, we hold that price till the end of the day mm -hmm. for the customer because she has already got the price, say 5,200 rupees. Mm -hmm. When the money comes to us, we go in the market and buy physical gold on their behalf. Okay. So since obviously we buy bulk, we buy 8 kgs, 10 kgs, 12, we get a much better price than what they are buying at micro. We are selling retail, buying wholesale. Right. In that sense. We take all that and put it into bricks. 
Briggs is a completely audited. Briggs is the largest world yeah, yeah. agency today in the world. We put it in Briggs. So they have access to that. They have they so they own a portion, a digital, a small portion of a bar. Okay. So and they have the choice to do it any day, every day, once a week, once a quarter, once a month. Most people uh, get into the habit of once a month because once a month it's like an SIP they get into. So we normally almost seventy percent of our people are once a month uh, at this point in time. Ninety percent of our customer base are women. Of which seventy percent are doing it month on month. It's a vast. Three thousand of them are all month on month, or eighty thousand of them are month on month. While what they come to us, they keep accumulating. We give them a digital. We give them an invoice, and they have a digital passbook. Mm-hmm. So they go to the partner and say, "What is my balance?" The partner looks at his application and says, "You have got five grams." They choose then that they want the jewelry for that five grams, or they want the bank transfer for the thing, or they want a loan against it. Oh wow! So they have to hit that five gram threshold. No, 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 no. At uh, any beyond, point, beyond beyond hundred milligrams, they can take. Okay. We have reduced it to the extent of hundred milligrams, which is nothing but about roughly six hundred rupees. Oh wow! Okay, that's really nice. But customers normally are saving for a long haul. They're saving for education. They're saving for marriages. They, I have a customer in Odisha, who she's saving for two of her daughters. One is thirteen. One is fifteen. She started four different plans. Two for each people. Because they get married age of twenty one. Okay, she has reached eight grams of savings for both of them so far. It is not that is sixteen grams of saving for a person whose entire family runs on livestock by selling cow's milk in the wow down. So I I'm unfortunately entirely unaware about the price of gold, so I can't convert that into rupees. So how much does sixteen grams roughly convert? You would for your calculation just say five thousand five hundred rupees is one gram. Five thousand five hundred rupees. So. For eighteen grams, five thousand rupees, twenty. That's about one lakh overall. That's that's a really uh, that's a really. For a person who is in deep rural villages, wow! And she's kept saving, kept saving little by little, little by little, and she's in fact given a customer testimonial saying that thank God for this, otherwise this money would have got squandered and wasted. Yeah. Also, they have another very interesting challenge. They can't keep money at home. Mm-hmm. Because it gets squandered away either through gambling or somebody drinking it away or for some emergency. They said the moment it is parked, it is saved, and I don't have to understand the savings instrument. The saving, I understand it is gold. So as long as this assure me this is secure, I give you the money. Wow, that's amazing. So out of curiosity, what's the average like monthly value in the total savings amount for a, a you know a deep rural individual? Because seven fifty rupees is what the average ticket size is, and Some of them are fifteen hundred, two thousand rupees per month, but seven hundred and fifty rupees is what they average saving. Which is roughly close to one hundred and twenty milligrams of gold. They save every month. Okay, and over a three-year lifespan, um, presumably they accumulate the the net value. I think well, thousand three fifty thousand or so. I presume in gold thereabouts. Mm. And that's that's the total savings value over a three-year lifespan. Is that a person for a single person? Uh, it depends. If you if you start with the five hundred rupees, this thing you get six thousand over three years, be eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand will roughly approximately get you about three three and a half grams of gold, depending okay. on the price of gold that time, which is good enough for gold jewelry. Ca- actually, cannot be made in something which is very very cheap. Of course, you have hundred milligram coins available, <laughs> but any chain, ring, bangle, earrings, these things require three to five grams of gold. Okay, so they are actually building for that. Okay. Mm-hmm. The one now understand what the traditional route is and why this is interesting for them. Let's say a customer goes to a traditional jeweler mm-hmm. in a village, Dhule, let's say, or Mumbai, or say, Ammanna, any place, state wala. A customer, how will he buy? What are the denominations available? Again, three grams, five gram, eight gram, ten grams. Mm-hmm. Obviously, because you can't make jewelry uh, less than that, yeah, cheaper, uh, lesser than that grammage. So that means when they buy that piece, they are paying for the design charges as well as they are paying for the making charges. Mm-hmm. So supposing you make a transaction of ten thousand rupees, mm-hmm. yeah, almost two to two and a half thousand rupees is gone in doing in anything for which you have no value of gold because mm-hmm. you made either making charges or you paid. A design and well, chat. Now mention the transportation charges of getting there and waiting and coming back and the security. Yeah, I get the wearing it. Yeah, all of that digital, all those problems sorted. Second, if you pay ten thousand, you get ten thousand worth of gold minus the three percent of GST. Mm-hmm. So three percent on GST compared to almost eighteen twenty percent of making, and it's a huge saving for the customer. Huge saving. 
now customer will say yeah but i could have got a piece of jewelry for me i said fine but after some time in two months the jewelry get obsolete you will again go and exchange it for other piece of jewelry when you exchange it this particular piece on which you paint the making charges everything else when you exchange it they'll again melt it and they'll pay melting charges yeah so if a making charge and design charge here you pay make melting charges there so you lost almost 20% value of that whole thing mm-hmm. you'll become something else which is again piece of jewelry mm-hmm. again you'll pay design and making charges so instead of doing that why didn't you save digitally go and buy once where you pay the making charges instead of paying it on every transaction and mm-hmm. transferring as long as it's safe and secure isn't this a better way to invest because by doing this day month to month sip in savings you will end up getting 6 to 8% extra gold wow which is a lot of value 6 to 8% if you are doing so 10 grams 6 to 8% of that is 600 to 800 milligrams is a lot of money to save yeah for the for one ton yeah, yeah, yeah which otherwise would have been zero in fact you would have probably got 80% of the value only yeah correct what we do uniquely also we collect the money from the customer we buy gold on the same day for the customer at the same rate mm-hmm. and credit the customer with grams of gold so customer does it the money credit they have gold credit so 1 gram 1.2 gram 1.3 gram now gold price keeps on going up at the end of the year gold prices normally go up to 10 to 12% in a year that's normally as mm-hmm. the trend which means if you started with 1 gram and you ended with 1.8 grams it is 1.8 gram multiplied that this rate you already got the upside yeah so i have a question here because um what i want to understand is so far what they've been doing in terms of physically traveling and buying the gold has that the joy of physically holding that piece with all the challenges that come associated with it so how did you convince you know the small savers these rural women that it's easier or better to have digital gold where how did you breach that trust gap look okay, so they are you agreeing they're small savers Yes, absolutely. If they are small savers, first of all, they can't get to a retail store unless you get to a certain amount of grammage. Yeah, like yeah. establish three to five grams. Yeah, that means they have to save it somewhere, no? Yeah, the three to five are where in the save it. Then they'll, they'll put it into the good lucks. They'll put it at home, which is all getting spent and squandered away. And they have no advantages of price. Yeah, they are saving five hundred rupees today, and the future value of money eighty week what four hundred eighty rupees or something. Yeah, four hundred fifty rupees. So what? And the gold price is going up. It's a double whammy. It said if you buy it micro saving today, you get the value of gold today. No, five hundred rupees worth of gold at today's rate. Amazing. Yeah, that's the then you know you're uh, you're adding nearly thirty percent to their overall savings through this digital gold mechanism. And then you give an insurance on top, and then you give them the best product that we have currently. Gold loans, of course, is a credit card. is a revolving credit card and we are the only ones who get it out revolving credit card we have not opened it out yet which is specially for the small businesses is to taking a flat gold loan and making a bullet payment of 3 months or 6 months or you have a revolving credit so oh, you wow. have some savings we give you a credit card against the savings oh wow as long as you revolve the credit no and you know what gold loans are 8% 9% yeah going up to Of course, there are some players who are charging twenty-five. I will not name them. Twenty-four, twenty-five percent. But you go to any good uh, public sector bank or a private sector bank, they are all in the range of eight to ten percent. Which means you get a credit at eight to ten percent, and a revolving credit, which is unheard of in the credit card parlance. Nobody in credit card gives you that kind of rates. So the one savings can lead to so many other benefits. without actually racking your brains about what the saving is about what the asset class is about how do i understand equity shares you you understand you talk to investors throughout the, imagine explaining to investors equity shares and candles and all candle bars and the graphs going up this going down and indexes <laughs> inko gold samajh mein aata hai and it's amazing yeah it's i think with one in one stroke you're taking their micro savings immediately converting it to something that's a good store of value and allowing them to access credit against it in a way that's much low that's half the cost of what they're doing presently absolutely that's across the life cycle of a 10 15 years you're effectively doubling their savings with compounding and and financially including a large part of india into the mainstream yeah monetizing gold so imagine if you can bring down the import bill of the government of india through this 
I don't think any other, if we could have had served the country in a better way than doing this. Absolutely. In which way. So, I, so that is why it's so exciting. No, that's that's a really fantastic product. And I think, it, I, you know, I, I'm truly rooting for you. I truly hope that by this time next year, uh, where we're sitting here, we're talking about a million lives changed. Last, I hope so too, yes. I hope so, I hope so too. So I want to understand, I mean, moving away from, you know, the, the transformative work you're doing. Uh, what's your journey been like as an entrepreneur? Because, I mean, uh, I don't think you started out, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur. You were, you were working in a luxury business. So, you know, maybe tell a little, you know, about how you got into the smart gold business. Because I, I can't, I imagine that's a really interesting journey as well. Uh, it, it, I think interesting because you and you reach a, a certain stage in life where you want to start giving, giving back to society. We're constantly, constantly taking, I don't mean to sound cliche, but... It, it, I think, happens in every man's journey or every woman's journey, every human being's journey that when you reach a certain point, you said, let me do something else also, which is not just make money and, uh, you know, build my own uh, own wealth. So all my life, I have worked with, uh, with retailers and very, very upmarket, very high lifestyle uh, businesses. I've spent almost 30 years in the working space. So going into another job or sitting on the board of some or some company was one option. The other option was, we understand the fact that gold is popular. Mm -hmm. We understand the fact 90% of this country or 90% of the jewelry sales is gold. We understand the fact that 90% of the industry is still unorganized. Mm -hmm. So here is an opportunity where we can take a simple product mm -hmm. and still create financial inclusion for the people mm -hmm. and get more and more people into the financial main financial markets. Wow. We can't serve the country in a better way it's exactly what GST did. Yeah, right? yeah. It's exactly what our demonetization did. Yeah, it's exactly what UPI did, right? Exactly. So imagine I'm using gold to do a, some, a revolution like that and we're taking it across the country. Yeah. And you're starting with the, the lowest, uh, you know, income sort of the population. That's the hardest place to build. You know, that's the hardest place to build a business, the hardest place to be. Um, getting those people financially included is, you know, lifting the whole pyramid up. Correct. And if you look at any other player, first of all, you don't have any competition in this space. A lot of people have sell digital gold. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. You can name them, you can go on the Google and you get the names. A lot of people do gold loads, but nobody does it the way we do it at the customer's doorstep in the deep rural villages. Mm -hmm. So it will take us time to get there. But once we get there, imagine getting this population into the main fold of the yeah. economy of the country. Yeah. I mean, that would be the game changer. I think you've mentioned that you work with, you know, microfinance institutions. As partners. Uh, I think they're already in, you know, a lot of deep rural areas and they're, you know, making credit accessible to a lot of deep rural areas. I think our previous podcast, we spoke about microfinance institutions at length. Um, but, you know, hopefully, you know, that's a really nice distribution channel because they should already have feet on the ground. Um, what's your experience been like of working with them? Is that, you know the right way to grow this business and reach, you know, every corner of It's one of the ways to grow the business, certainly, because just the top uh, 15 microfinance institution probably has about 40 million people in okay. customer base. I mean, I'm just, just top 15 and we don't need to get down to the 60, 70 sure. microfinance institution, just the top 15. However, there's only one challenge. They definitely get credit to the people, but the customers are ultimately becoming net borrowers. Yeah. And this credit that to get to them is actually unsecured credit mm -hmm. because this is a joint liability group loan. Five yeah. ladies give guarantee to each other. Moment that same customer starts saving in gold, who's taken a loan, they're creating a soft layer on their product, and their unsecured loan is kind of getting secured. Not that there is any connection between the two. However, the same customer is on one side also building wealth, on one side also a borrower. Mm -hmm. So what happened? The customer's credit history starts improving. Yeah, that customer because of the credit history starting improving, many other products and opportunities open up for the customer. Over, it may not be available today, but these are the customers and younger customers they here for the next fifty years. And it really the market starts opening up, and instead of just continuously making them borrowers and see, there are some restrictions that um, you can't take more than five loans up all the family together. The, all the gold has no restriction like that now because it's a savings product. Yeah. Also, what happens from a microfinance institution perspective, if a customer takes a loan from you and does a gold transaction for you, chances are the customer would stick with you for the gold even after the loan is over. Mm -hmm. So customer sticking has become very uh, essential for the microfinance because otherwise what will happen is 
once the loan is tenured or over they move to another uh, mm. and you know i'd wager though is that if a customer is sticking with you and they continuously make those gold transactions and you know they've taken one loan they've paid that loan off the next time they come for a larger chunk of credit you can you know from 50 60000 i think the microfinance ticket says you can then go to like 3l 5l because now not only do they have that gold but you have that credit history and that purchase history so they're building a data platform as well and genuinely helping the customer is i think is instead of just making them then borrowers and con- continuously you know trying to service loans here and here the customers are going to actually fulfill their yeah other aspirations through little micro savings because if yeah. you ask them to save to one they won't be able to pay the emis yeah but at least it's a start yeah. and moments it's a start in a few years time the customer mind is turned education is happening then they say okay what other things can i save on mm. so it will help the banking industry eventually it will help the insurance industry because today this customer that completely unaware of health insurance they don't even do life insurance cattle insurance there's so many other products that they need mm-hmm. for their survival but nobody reaches them yeah because most other institution are focused and concentrated in the cities where they see quick money making we are not into that and we have chosen the harder path and the harder path is always the i mean it's but you know a harder path always has the greatest towards at the end of it well harder path definitely has the greatest satisfaction I mean, and we want want to stick to this. I mean, we have had enough people and more telling us that you probably should become our B two C platform. We get one million customer in probably two months or three months. That's how the most B two C platform. But that's not that's not reformative. That's not transformative. We do something which can reform the country. Otherwise, better not to because yeah. there are enough and more products and enough yes. and more places for the and there are enough and more choices for us here. But there are very very few choices for the rural customer. Got it. and that is where i want to belong so i have a question right now you're working with these partners to reach these customers through the last mile um is there any ambition to also build communication channels or direct customer connect to the same people or say you present need to okay uh, but we use the whatsapp channel and mm-hmm. uh, we use them but many of our customers are not the uh, smartphone users feature mm-hmm. phone so they do but feature for is sms the problem with sms is you can't stitch uh, messages so you might get a message for a transaction but you can't have a conversation on the same message mm-hmm. whatsapp allows you that stitchiness uh, uh, stitching uh, that is only option through a uh, whatsapp, WhatsApp current group okay. smart if messages one day start offering in indian grain bowl i mean my messages allow you to make a payment but what happens you get a payment transaction from somewhere else a gb something else yeah, yeah. something else from somewhere else yeah. customer are not able to you know maybe maybe if uh, you know once a customer reach, reaches a savings threshold they might decide they want to buy a smartphone and they might decide they want to continue you know to make more gold savings and then you have you have had situations like that we have had real life situations like that we have one smartphone in the family the son is to handle it in a family of five of them the son is to handle it and he is to make the transaction for behalf of the mom a uh, continuous lead then mom said no but uh, you are not making it so i will also buy a smartphone i want to handle my <laughs> so she then went and bought another smartphone so Sounds, I, uh, yeah so it's 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 all almost reform yeah it's almost reform i mean yeah. i wish i could meet i wish i could uh, reach more customers uh, soon i think that's a challenge today yeah i think that's always the challenge in, in india is distribution and reaching the you know the last mile customer just because getting there is such a challenge you know 16 hours uh, you know is 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 no cape walk and i have met close to 600 customers across the country i've traveled pundukottai adhyaman kottai ulsadana uh, nahar lagoon i mean i can tell you some of the places dimapur i've traveled mm-hmm. to some of the places and believe me although i don't speak the language the language of gold is universal absolutely and you start talking about gold you see it light up i even did one something in nal bazar in uh, yabe andheri uh, it is a very small hut when they said please come and sit So a lot of ladies, ladies came up, and I'm getting the same reaction everywhere. That yeah, has the plan started? Can we pay right now? <laughs> wow! That is so that that ex- that excited because they understand the value. Mm-hmm. Because like just exactly how you you are understanding when you talk to the customer, customer understands. Of course, this is good. Of course, this is good. I have to we have to kind of crack the distribution. Yeah, a uh, little uh, smarter. Well, I have absolute faith in you, uh, Jaydeep. I think that you're going to do a fantastic job and. No, in a year's time, we're going to be talking about how you get from a million to ten million, and that'll be its own journey. But uh, you know, it's an incredible story that you're able to make. You know, these 
smart goal savings plans accessible to you know so many Indians and uh, make financial inclusion a reality yeah. when so many people talk about it. Um, I think on that note, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Uh, it's been a pleasure to hear about everything you have to say, and you know we really wish you the absolute best for Zwala Smart Gold. I'm sure you're going to do incredible things for this country, and um, you know we we look forward to you know following your journey. Thank you so much, Varun. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much for allowing me so much of uh, time to speak about this. I love this product and I love this country. So nothing better than speaking about it. This podcast is produced by Little Equities Private Limited, a Savvy Registered Research Analyst. Registration number INA 00004787. The information provided in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Investment in securities markets are subject to market risk. We strongly advise all investors to read all related documents carefully before investing.